Last time I showed you some of my old kitchen. This time we're in the new one, or close to it, kitchen adjacent. Behold the breakfast nook. Joan loves it. It's one of her favorite places here. Cute little windows, cute little space. She can sit here and look out over the vast barren landscape that is our backyard. She calls it Cafe J. She comes out, she gets her morning coffee, she makes her breakfast sandwich. She sits down and says, Cafe J is open for business. But Cafe J has some issues, and we're going to address those on today's episode of Uncle Benny's Garage. So, this is the chairs and table that we got. A little ice cream set, actually pretty comfortable. It's got these little pads on the chairs. Here's what we gotta do. We got a one, we gotta change the color from this yellow to something better. I'm gonna take these pads off. They're okay, they're still pretty paddy. Uh, I'm gonna give them a good cleaning. The tabletop, so for the last like 10 years or whatever, we've been throwing wine corks into some vases up on the shelf. And I'm gonna take all those corks and I wanna do some sort of epoxy resin cork table. And uh, I'm gonna put a little little cork edge around it and it's gonna be super cool, hopefully. And that's what's happening with this. So, because it's gonna take the longest, I think the first thing we need to do is jump on the tabletop. All right, so the tabletop we're making is 30 inches across, wide, diameter. So I got this piece of MDF and that's gonna be our base core of the new table. Center. So to cut out the circle, we're going to use this. It's a router on a little circle jig template. If you don't have one of these, you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. You can make one. I got this one a while back cheap at a garage sale. I think it's pretty cheap to begin with. It's basically a plate that screws to your router and then there's a adjuster for your distance and you put a center point on it and you spin it around. Like I said, you can make one of these out of a piece of wood. You just cut it out to your screw holes they're here and then drill a bunch of holes for measurements or wherever you want to pivot on a screw and you do it that way. This one comes with this little piece and you screw it down and it becomes the little base for the little slidey thing that centers in there. So then this little piece just goes over that Yeah, it's just that easy. There it is. So we want 30 inches minus, it's going to be about 3 eighths on either side for part of the cork to go over. Both sides of that are, that's going to be um, 3 quarters of an inch. And then, geez, what do you leave for the epoxy? A quarter inch? That seems like a lot. An eighth of an inch? Let's go for 3 sixteenths. We'll put it in the middle. 3 sixteenths times 2 is uh, 6 sixteenths, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, that is 3 eighths, minus 3 eighths. So 30 inches minus an inch and an eighth, 28 and 7 eighths, we'll go with that. This little thing, this side of this square is your inner diameter of what you're going to cut, and this side of the square is your outer diameter of what you're gonna cut. And we tighten that down. Now this ruler's in half scale because whatever you cut here doubles. So an inch on this looks like half an inch on the ruler, but that's how it works. All right, here we go.
Well, this is going swimmingly. This episode is brought to you in part by Loose Connections. All right, the other router might be dead. Little pieces were breaking off when I was taking it apart. We'll deal with that later. All right, this one's working. Now, because the outside piece is gonna be the edge of the mold for the epoxy, before I go all the way through with this inner cut, I wanna go ahead and do that outer cut so I can make sure I have the space I need. The outside edge of the table we said was gonna be 30 inches. In case you can't tell, I'm not exactly settled in here yet. Still a work in progress. Now we're gonna set it to outer diameter at 30. Cause that's gonna be the finished tabletop size for the thing. far do we have left to go? Ha! Perfect! Now we have the core of the table and the base of the mold. We're going to take a little break so I can tell you about this light. Now the original light that hung here hung right about here and it was this and uh, it hung right at this level so whenever you'd be here you'd, you'd walk into it. It was funny when it happened to her because she'd walk into it and then she'd be like, ah, uh, uh, and then boom, turn right back into it again. It was great, but it, it had to go. It had to go really fast. So I got this one and it's really nice. We like the color. We like everything about it. Um, but the original one hung up here 
It had to go over. This is all wood. There's a giant thick header that goes along in here. Uh, I couldn't go straight up with the wire because the wood was so thick. I was drilling through, drilling through. I had to go around it. So I had to go around, up over a beam, um, through insulation, up over the top of the header, boom, under another. It was, it was rough. I was finally able to get fish tape and hook it through and get it through there enough to pull the Romex back up and around. And I got a, a steel ceiling plate on this side and, and got it all hung. I didn't film uh, <laughs> hardly any of it. It was a very long, frustrating process. But when I finally got it through, I was happy enough to take this. Holy mackerel. Look at what I just did. I got the box up in the ceiling and I got the, the fish tape uh, put in there and it's gotta go down. It's gotta go over the beam. It's gotta go over the other beam. This is wood. It's gotta go around through a bunch of insulation and down out of this little hole. And I fished it out with this little baby hook. Miracles do happen. And now back to your regularly scheduled table. Now we've got corks. Okay, so we got them separated. We got the ones with no writing on them. Those are definitely gonna be interior ones. We got the synthetic ones over here. Some of them have cool pictures, but I don't wanna use the synthetics unless I absolutely have to. We've got a handful of these twists to remove because we're fancy like that. This cork is the one from the champagne bottle that we had the day we closed on the house. So it's gonna be center and then everything else around it. Next step is all the corks with labels and writing and little fancy pictures on them. We gotta decide what ones are gonna go all the way around the edge. We don't want a lot of just generic, here, enter code and, and that kind of stuff. We want, you know, the, the cool looking ones. Hopefully we got enough to go around. If not, if we have to supplement with some of the synthetics, cause they, they do have cool pictures, then we'll do that. Um, but then we got to make sure we have enough. All right, this is what we ended up with. I don't know how much of that got filmed. The camera's having an issue with the lights in here. I gotta fix that. I'll work on that, I promise. But this is where we're at. 
everything I planned on at the beginning of this is out the window. I had originally thought I would do the little border and then I was gonna do the, the tops, all the wine stained parts and it was gonna make this little colorful kind of collage thing. First of all, putting the corks horizontal, showing off the words and the logos and everything. That's really the way to display corks. If corks are cool at all, it's this way. You, you don't wanna just look at the ends. So there's that. Then I thought I had enough to cover the thing and do the border, right? No, I barely had enough to do this. I got about halfway done and I was like, uh-oh. I got three quarters of the way done and I was like, oh man, all I had left was like a handful of the short synthetic corks and all these short Behringer corks. And I was like, I can't do a whole section of just one kind of, you know. So I had to go back and kind of start replacing them with other things. I had to get a little creative. I, I did little circle spots with some of these twist off ones. Uh, Joan tells me though it's Trader Joe's two buck chuck. So I had to constantly like, okay, what can I take from here? How can I maneuver these around? How can I get more out of what I have? I uh, trimmed around uh, kind of a rough cut right now uh, because that changes something else. Now I don't have anything left for a border. I'm gonna have to do a different border and that's fine, I'll, I'll come up with something. So I glued in all the corks. A lot of rearranging. I used some of the last ones to fit in the little edge pieces. I rough trimmed those with the little pull saw. Then I ran the whole thing around the uh, scroll saw to give it a nice clean look. And then I went around it with the little handheld drum sander uh, to finish it off. Had to re-glue a couple of them and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks fantastic. I'm working on the mold over here and we're going to have to do the trim and I got to finish painting the metal parts of the chairs and the table legs and that's going to happen in the next one. So thanks for watching. Tabletop. Corks. Uncle Benny's Garage. Thanks for watching. It's hot. Man, it's hot. Cafe J is open for business. What was that? <laughs> J is open for business.